Welcome to our podcast, friends. Thank you so much for listening. If you like our podcast and want to support us, please subscribe or follow us. And please don't forget to click the notification bell so you will be notified when new episodes release. Thank you, and God bless. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me and my friend, the friar, Father Stephen Sanchez, a discalced Carmelite priest. Good morning, Father. Good morning. We're back. Yes. We're back. We're continuing Good Friday because it is so good. <laughs> Can't get enough. Can't get enough. Do you, before we get into the adoration of the Holy Cross, which is where we're going to be picking up, do you find yourself, what kind of range of emotions do you experience on Good Friday? Like, are you mostly sad? or more kind of melancholy are you joyful or like where do you find yourself nowadays there's um affectively right affectively and in the liturgy the liturgy of the hours and stuff right there there is a yeah there's a sadness there is a again this sort of mystagogical experience of uh, loss Right or or repentance or the desire to to grow. There there's a conviction, right? There's a conviction, right? And so usually Good Fridays, they're always, I guess the word would be somber. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a seriousness about it. There's a a quietness about it. There's a again, I think it's a reflection or a consideration of what it is that we're celebrating liturgically and what what again going back to the the catechism of rereading and reliving you know to enter enter into it in a way that is uh present to us and again there are people that that don't there are people that have absolutely no idea there are people out you know partying and and mm -hmm. doing everything living their life completely oblivious and ignorant of what it is that the church is celebrating during these days or, or they're more busy about, you know, going out buying Easter eggs and Easter baskets and what am I going to get and da, da 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 and that kind of stuff. And there's all that, which is, you know, it's got its place and it's a good also. But um, I think for the, the believing church, the, the, this day is a day that is very, um, again, I think the, the word is somber. There's something there about that. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't help but feel can't help but I can't escape the feeling the, the knowledge the realization that no matter how much I love Jesus now right because I can't say I always have but now even like I'm the reason he's on that cross right and and even though I love him now to the degree that I love him now He's still on that cross for the same reason, right? So it's it's like if you've ever hurt somebody you love and you know Yeah. Like you know that you, you it wasn't an accident, you made that choice, right? And it caused someone pain and just that to grapple with that. Right. That it kind of because it can be a disappointment in yourself, like how could I do this? But that's not where you should focus. Right. It's, it's instead of thinking about how unworthy you are, instead a realization of how good the father is. Yes. Yeah. And it's so, yeah, I can't I can't get away from that. So it's it's weird because I'm I'm so thankful. But man, I'm such a, a goofus, too. Like <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The brokenness. Yeah. yeah. It's about the brokenness. Yeah. All right. So this Holy Cross. Tell us about oh yes, um, so the last time we were speaking, we were speaking about speaking about the the liturgy of Friday of the Passion of the Lord, uh, or what we call Good Friday. We spoke about the first part of that liturgy, which is the liturgy of the Word, and which is in two parts: the liturgy of the Word and the solemn intercessions. So then we, once we have finished with the solemn intercessions, and we enter or flow into the second part of the liturgy, which is the adoration of the Holy Cross. 
And I always have a problem with this word adoration because I think, and for me, I'm I think I'm much more aware of the fact of the the the, the optic of that for especially for non Catholics, mm-hmm. right, uh, or even for Catholics who don't uh, don't know how to distinguish. Um, mm-hmm. That first, I want to say it's, it's not an adoration of a uh, or worship of a piece of wood. That's not what it is, right? There is a, there is a, there is a, a cross that is that is venerated during the liturgy, but it's not that. It's it's about the whole idea of the reality that this sign is pointing to the reality of the fact that Jesus Christ, true God, true man, the Messiah, the 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 the, the incarnated uh, second person of the Trinity, uh, has come into our world and has suffered and died for us, right? And so that is the whole idea of the cross, which is you know, another way. Uh, I guess a concentrated or reduced way of pointing to or signifying the whole mystery of the passion, the mm-hmm. Paschal mystery, right? So I, I always have a problem with adoration. I would rather be just the veneration of the Holy Cross instead of the adoration of the Holy Cross. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I'm who am I? I I'm I'm just a grunt. So my, <laughs> my opinion doesn't really matter. But anyway, that's my two cents on that. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it's, it's good. And I think that comes from a place of experience where you, like me, you've probably know lots of, of beautiful Catholics who don't know how to differentiate and they, there's too much of a focus on other things instead of right. God or Jesus. Right. So. Amen. A to the men. Yeah. yeah. So when we get to the liturgy then, this part of the liturgy uh, of the Adoration of the Holy Cross, which is what its formal title is. So there, there are two options in the showing of the cross. And they both begin at the entrance uh, to the church, the doors on the inside of the doors, right? And so one option is that the cross or a crucifix, it can be either one. Uh, usually it's a crucifix, but... The liturgy calls for a cross. Just It could be just a, a cross with no cr- corpus on it. So the option is that the cross is lifted high at the entrance of the church, and then the deacon or the priest then uh, chants or sings the invitation to venerate the cross. You know? And the invitation is, Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. And then the assembly responds or chants, sings, uh, Come, let us adore. So then the, the ministers proceed to the middle of the church, and then again they re- raise the cross or crucifix and again invite to venerate. So there's the chanted uh, invitation of the chanted response. And then finally they go up into the sanctuary and lift it up one final last time and again invite uh, to venerate, and then there's the response. So that's one option. The other option is that the cross, again, at the entrance of the, of the church, is veiled. It's covered, it's usually a red cloth. It's covered in a red cloth. And so it's slowly revealed. So one part, one arm of the cross, maybe the top part or the right or left arm, is unveiled. And so it's uh, the invitation to venerate the cross and the response. And then again to the middle of the church and then the second arm or the second part of the cross or crucifix is revealed. And again, the invitation to venerate and the response. And then the final one is they come up into the sanctuary and the cross is fully revealed or the crucifix is fully revealed. And then there is that invitation to venerate. I prefer this one. I prefer that the the cross or crucifix be veiled because... To me, it's much it's much more mystagogical in that, again, as for me, it speaks a lot in terms of 2,000 years later, we're still discovering and revealing and entering deeper into the mystery of the cross, and this is sort of a sign of that, mm. right? So that's why I prefer this, this option to, yeah. to s- reveal the cross in, in part. Right? Yeah, so instead of just... Here's the thing. We got it. Right. You see it? Right. You see it? You see it? We yeah. got it? Right. Yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Instead, it's yeah. discovering over yes. and over what is this thing. Right. 
Yeah. Right. So that's my preference. But again, that's there are those there are those two options. So then what happens in is after the final invitation to venerate uh, the mystery of the cross, then the faithful file make you know lines we file up and they come they're invited to come forward to make a, a sign of reverence to the cross. In a, and it's acknowledging then the fact that they have been saved and that their salvation came at a cost, and that cost is the death of Christ, which we just celebrated in the liturgy of the word, you know, in terms of the passion, right? The, the suffering of Christ, uh, and that that is how salvation has been offered to me. And so it is making a sign of reverence so it's you know, we file up and in smaller churches it's good to have just one cross but like in larger churches where you have like a thousand people attending or more you know mm -hmm. it, it would take forever to do it so yeah. you, they usually might have more than one cross to venerate they just come up and they make a sign of veneration which can be you can touch the cross you can bow before the cross you can kiss the cross or you can make a genuflection before the cross all of this then is part of an acknowledgement that the passion has happened for me, right? To open up that capacity of reconciliation to the Father. And there's some beautiful music that can be sung during the, you know, this veneration, you know, What Wondrous Love, which is a beautiful, beautiful hymn. O Sacred Heart, Surrounded, uh, when I behold the wondrous cross, or the the gospel, the the gospel uh, hymn, uh, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Right. There's also another option that I have never really experienced myself, but it is something that is present in the the missal that they are called the reproaches, and the reproaches is basically God saying, "What did I do to you?" that you refuse to be faithful to the covenant what, you know, what what more did i what more could i do for you right but there was a, the the inability to be faithful to the covenant and which then led to the fact that christ had to come a, and to suffer so they're called the reproaches and they're 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 very beautiful they're, there's chants and stuff and so i i have not experienced that myself but is it a call I and know response yes so there's usually two choruses there's a chorus and they sing the, you know, one part of the reproach, and then another choir uh, will sing the response. It's, mm. it's two two choirs that that, that kind of back respond and forth. to each other. Yeah, yeah. It's, I bet that. Every, it, yeah, that sounds pretty intense. Yeah. As, especially as you're going, you're in line, and yeah, it's taking line forever to, venerate, to get up there yeah. to the cross, yes. and you have to listen to it over listen and over. This. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. So after. You have the veneration of the cross. Everybody goes back to their place. Uh, and then we have the third part of the liturgy, which is the liturgy of Holy Communion. So again, so since there is no Eucharist celebrated, right? The, the last Eucharist that was celebrated was on Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And so there's no Eucharist celebrated until... Easter Vigil, right, or, or the night of the, the Vigil, right? So during this time, they put the cross somewhere uh, to one side or be, sometimes just put it in front of the altar, laid in front of the altar. Uh, what happens then is after everybody's returned to their places, you'll have ministers that will come up. They'll come out and they'll lay an altar cloth on the altar. They begin to dress the altar. And then as they're dressing the altar and they put the missal up on the altar, Usually, two acolytes with candles will go with a priest or the deacon, and the priest or the deacon, the minister, will be wearing a humeral veil, the humeral veil that we wear for, for benediction, right? So we, they come with the, the humeral veil, uh, and then they go to the place of the altar of repose, uh, where they keep the Blessed Sacrament, and then they bring the Blessed Sacrament covered in the humeral veil, so it's covered, so that... They're not showing it. So just like when they take it out for the procession, they, they cover it for this procession on Holy Thursday. Yeah, and if anyone they're, doesn't know what that, it's like when they're doing adoration and they kind of cover their hands so they're not touching the them, monstrance yeah, and exactly, all that. The monstrance, it's right. that thing, yeah. That big that big uh, shawl like kind of a thing, right? The humeral yeah. veil. 
So then they come with the Eucharist uh, covered in the humeral veil. They place it on the altar, right? And then the deacon or the priest then takes off the humeral veil. And then the priest, whoever's presiding, they uh, go to the altar and they're working. It's sort of like, again, it's like a, a, if you've ever, if you've ever been to a communion service where there's no mass, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so this is the communion service. The priest goes up to the altar. He leads the assembly in the Our Father. And then he bows and he recites the private prayer. He genuflects and then he raises one of the consecrated hosts. And we have the communion service, right? And he begins the Behold the Lamb of God, right? And then as the assembly responds, you know, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Right, so then they have the distribution of communion. So this is all done very simply, right? Uh, sometimes there's music, sometimes there's not. Yeah, and, and then, it's, it's also a little jarring here too because it's, if you're j missing a whole chunk of stuff, right? It is because you, you're just jumping into communion service. And you go like, wait a minute, there's a priest. Why isn't he celebrating mass? Well, because there is no mass. Yeah, right. This is this is this is a communion service because again, this is the church still. There is nothing to celebrate. We're still kind of in, in shock and in mourning and in repentance for uh, the passion of the Lord. So, but there is this communion, sort of like, and because of that passion, we we are uh, sons and daughters through the passion of Christ. And so there is this communion. There's this repledging. There's this acknowledgement, right, that we are still in this mystery of salvation and redemption with the Lord yeah. uh, why do because you, of his sacrifice. Yeah. Why do, you, why do you think instead they didn't just not have communion today or at the, on, on Good Friday, right? To, 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 to drive home even more that the, you can't get to Jesus. He's not here right. anymore. Yeah. I think that would be even more uh, jarring, right? Uh, so I, I would have to do some investigation as to why uh, we do have uh, the communion service, right? It might be part of it that the connection to then is the fact that the whole, um, the blood and water flowing from the side. That this, so this is, this, is, this is part of that truth that we have communion with God the Father because of the Son through the sacraments. And so here we have we have communion and maybe it's maybe that's what that liturgical mindset might be so i'm not too sure about that yeah and and i suppose that's that's maybe a really good point it's we are christian like we have yes. a church we have yes. communion with jesus even though we're celebrating this whole event yes we we have the communion with him now and so and again it's, it's a communion with everybody else as well that mm -hmm. we're all together you know part of the whole body of christ thing right the yeah. whole ecclesial thing right yeah so then you have that your usual uh distribution of communion after communion then after communion there is uh after everybody uh returns to their seat then either the deacon or the priest then uh puts on the humeral veil again and then with the two candles uh leading they remove the blessed sacrament from the church again they go it goes back to the altar repose it goes back to the secret room or wherever it is that they're keeping it and they take the altar cloth off again so the altar is stripped again so we're back to this idea of yeah, he's not here mm -hmm. uh, and then after the priest comes back from uh, removing the blessed sacrament he comes back to the altar uh, or to the presider's chair and he recites the closing prayer. There is no blessing because, again, it, it is this is the liturgy from Thursday. This is Friday's liturgy, and we're getting ready for Saturday's liturgy, which is again the the vigil uh, of the Easter, right, of the Holy Night, the Easter vigil of the Holy Night, which is what it's entitled. And so then there's this. There's the closing prayer. There's no blessing. There's no nothing, and then. The ministers 
come before and they genuflect before the crucifix because now the crucifix is there and so they genuflect before the crucifix and then they exit in silence and that's it and so then after they exit in silence and either the priest or the ministers come back and they set up the crucifix in a place prominent place usually right before the altar or Mm -hmm. at the steps of the altar Uh, usually with surrounded by candles right and so this is then the time for meditation reflection upon the death of christ the passion of christ the the price of our of our redemption right and so then the church they're just left to reflect on this in silence and so the church is empty you you can stay there and reflect you can stay there and pray whatever so usually it's open then from three to whatever or if it's in the evening from mm-hmm. whatever till 10 or 11 whenever they decide it's time to to shut the doors and 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 you go home again in this sort of a jarred uh feeling of like yeah things are not the way they used to be or things are not the way they should be and there's something missing there's something there's a wrongness to, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's the wrongness to it they go like, yeah, this is not the way it's supposed to be. And so that's part of the whole then feeling of uh, the, the, the mystagogy then uh, of, the, of the liturgy. Yeah, and, that's, and it's so that, 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 um, that awareness that something's wrong, off, as you're saying, that, um, that this, this, there's an incompleteness or there, there's a lack. It's not finished the way it should be. I think is really interesting in, in, in anyone who's ever experienced uh, the death of a family member kind of thing, right? So for me, I think about oh, when my father passed away and you go home, well, he's supposed to be there, but he's not, right? right. There's an incompleteness to the experience. Right. And sometimes in some, some Hispanic communities, what they would do, if they, back then when it was held at three, there was a special liturgy for women, right? It was it was for women, uh, and it was basically the, whole, the the women would come and they would uh, it was sort of like the stations of the cross, mm-hmm. and it was basically accompanying Our Lady in her sorrow. The fact that mm. uh, Our Lady has lost her son, she's grieving the death of her son. So sometimes it would be on Friday evenings, and sometimes it would be on Saturday mornings before the vigil, and so it would be like. Uh, so the priest would come or a deacon would come and uh, give a homily on the passion and then they would they would pray uh, the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary or they would uh, do the stations of the cross and basically it's it's just accompanying our lady in her sorrow and so that was sort of part of the uh, a tradition that is that is was present in or might still be present in, in the Hispanic community sort of like a continuation of this reflection and meditation then yeah that's that's beautiful because i think there's so much for us to and this is why i love our faith there's so much to reflect on and to dig in um i I heard somebody was talking about um what must it have been like for mary who jesus he he did anything she ever asked for right she goes hey turn this water into wine. And he's like, but mom, do it. And he does it, <laughs> right? In so many words. Uh, he, he'd do anything for her. He loves her. And she probably had no doubt in her mind in those moments that if I were to ask him to save himself, because he loves me, you know what I mean? And so I'm no. going to hold back. I'm not going to ask for my son. And then for Jesus to be looking down at her and knowing the pain he's causing her with all, because her life was a mess. And so for all of that mess to culminate into this, right? like I'm do, I did this to you, you know, and you're the most undeserving person to ever go through this and I'm doing this. So all of that, that suffering and all of that sadness and all that pain and, and then even on, on, on top of all that, I kind of think about, like, for her, what must it have been like, just that emptiness after? You know, just, yeah, my son's gone. And then, yeah. may, 
you know, I would have had some serious doubts and problems with God at that moment. I don't, I, I would imagine she has a little bit more faith in me, but to go really, gotcha. like, did Conti- this continue have to, to happen? Continue to trust in God in spite of what my experience is right now. Movies. Mm. Uh, okay. So, for me, I think the most heart-wrenching scene in Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth, my favorite favorite, favorite movie, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, religious movie, I should say. The scene of, of uh, what we call the desolation, the scene is when they, they lower the body of Jesus off the cross. It's raining, it's, uh, it's, it's miserable, and it's rainy, and so they lower him down, and then they bring him to her, and she's holding his body in her arms and she wails. I mean, it is such a heart wrenching, gut wrenching cry. Uh, and it's just, an, oh my word. I was just like, oh. And so that is probably one of the most moving scenes. And it's um, Olivia Hussey who uh, plays the Blessed Mother in uh, Jesus of Nazareth by. Uh, Zeffirelli, Franco Zeffirelli. She got this part after she had played uh, Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. Mm. She was a very young girl, and so she plays she plays the part of Mary in, in Zeffirelli's movie. But it is it is heart wrenching, absolutely heart wrenching. When I saw it in the theaters, everybody <laughs> in the theater was blowing snot everywhere. I mean, it was just totally, totally crushing. Yeah. So, yeah. I've, n- yeah. I've never seen it. Now I have to go see it. Thank you, Father. Um, You're, it's only three and a half hours. Yeah. Well, and uh, the, I don't know, everyone, well, at this point, pretty much everyone's seen the Mel Gibson's Passion of the Christ. Which the is, that's hard to watch ob- for obvious reasons because he yeah. wanted everyone to focus on the suffering part. Um but I remember that that was really rough to see. So, yeah, now, now I want to watch this one. Can you imagine? I mean, I know you don't have you don't have kids like I have kids, right? You're not a father like I'm a father. But imagine the worst person in the world that you can contemplate, right? Whatever he's done to or she's done to be that worst person in the world. And like to me, I think, Could I give up Sophia for them? Right. Just, and not just can I give, could I give her up? Could I, could she take her place or take his place right. or whatever? But right, right, right. like imagine, like, and say they're going to get the death penalty or something like that, right? And, and I would imagine, well, all things considering, it's probably a lot more if you can even use the word humane at this point in time in history than it used to be. But, but not all. So it's not just like that. She's going to be tortured. Yes. In his place. Yes. And, and then to think even, even more. And and in a a total and complete rejection, the fact that they picked Barabbas mm. over Jesus, right? The fact that she sees him, uh, suffering, she knows that this is a, a what they call it, what we would call a kangaroo court. Mm-hmm. She knows that the whole court thing is set up, and he's yeah, it's sort of like okay, it's all been rigged, uh, and, and the complete and total rejection of of him, and, and again, a very shameful, shameful, shameful death that is totally you know we still don't grasp it again because he was he was crucified naked. And we, being yeah, we got to cover him up. We can't take that. Yeah, we we can't, we can't, we can't. And it's not nothing about pornography or anything. It's just like, no, he should be covered because, it's, yeah. So there's something even shameful in that. And to 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 be a public execution, capital punishment, and not just capital punishment, not us, not getting your head chopped off because you're a Roman citizen, but the 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 worst possible way to kill someone yeah uh, to, to 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 do that and to 
for her to see her her son, her child, uh, suffer that. Yeah, and 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 he does it so willingly, right? And yeah. like it, it, he does it. I love and my friend Chris at work. He loves the the scene in the garden too, because even Jesus, as he says. Even Jesus is like, are you sure about this? Yeah. <laughs> like, are you sure you really want to do it? But he does it so willingly. And so like to, and then I think, again, going back to this, this example in my head, like if I could, this person who's done horrific things to, to whoever and, and deserves death. And I'm, and I say in God's place, no, just go ahead and take my daughter instead. And then for her to go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and die for you, man. Like, I can't comprehend it. And it like right. it breaks my heart just even trying to think about it, right? And that's part of the whole mystery of you know, the whole beyond our capacity to understand of the Paschal mystery, right? Is and even Paul himself will say like, yeah, for someone to give their life for a just man, yeah, but to give your life for someone not just, mm-hmm. hmm, yeah, because we are so focused on justice and retribution and vengeance and in, in our culture and i think just humanity in our in our fallen nature that's what we desire it's like well what do you mean that, that guy did that he doesn't deserve whatever right. right right or he gets that well why don't i get this now we turn into the the day workers right well what do you mean yes. they're paying that you're paying yes. them the same as as me yes i remember uh... I don't know if I've told you this. I maybe I've mentioned this before in some other episode in terms of forgiveness. During the uh, the bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City, uh, and I was there. I was there at our, our monastery there when it, that happened. And one of the the young girls that were that was murdered uh, died in the terrorist bombing. Uh, she was uh, studying Spanish literature. She loved John of the Cross. She would help at our clinic. We have a free clinic at the parish there in Oklahoma City. She would help at the free clinic there, uh, and so she was. You know, she 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 was murdered. She dies in in the bombing, and then her father, Mr. Welch, and she was Julie Welch was her name. And Mr. Welch, um, he went on a campaign across the U.S against capital punishment because he didn't want Timothy McVeigh uh, to suffer capital capital punishment because it's against our faith. Yeah. And yes, my daughter died because of him, but just because of that, it doesn't make it right that he should die. So he was on this capital campaign, uh, this the capital campaign. That's not a capital campaign. <laughs> a nationwide campaign against uh, capital punishment. Yeah. And was that, I was like, if anybody, and again, say, so look at me. If anybody has a right to ask for yourself, <laughs> yeah. it's you. And so like, ah. so I was like, wow, what a, what an example. Yeah. What an example. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Man, God is so good. And as we were saying in one of our more recent episodes, we, it's not an obligation that we have. It's just this deeper invitation yeah. into the truth that is God and his love and how that's supposed to inform all of our reality. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Mm. Well, thank amazing. you for this. And I, I, I hope everyone en- enjoyed it. And I hope everybody, including you, good sir, has a beautiful and blessed Good Friday. And a, Enter into it. Yeah. And I hope the whole Triduum and and Easter and everything is good and spend some time reflecting on how good the Father is. Amen. Amen. God bless. I will see you all next time. Bye for now. Bye.